I work at a company called Crypto Economics Lab, building an LT application framework called Plasma Chamber. So today I'll be giving the latest research update on layer two technology and introducing our framework called Plasma Chamber. And the goal of today's talk is I want everyone in this room to know what exactly it's like to build an application <coughs> on top of layer two. Before we start, I wanna I just wanna give a little bit of our background of who we are and where we came from. So the Crypto Economics Labs research and development team consists of these three people on the top row, including myself, um, and we focus on to build the framework that I just mentioned. And the other three on the second row are in the adoption team, and they are in charge of running POC projects, putting our R&D efforts and outcomes into the uh, putting into practice uh, with the real world use cases. And how exactly Crypto Economics Lab started? And why we focus on the abstraction of layer two? So ever since the company was founded, um, Plasma has been our research focus, but we, we had this major breakthrough when this blog post was released. It was written by Calvin Fitcher, a former Plasma researcher at Plasma Group, and he wrote this article last summer. So back then, we were researching all different kinds of plasma flavors, but it took us like a whole month to convince ourselves why exactly EVM plasma was not really feasible. And after reading this post, we thought exit games should be really, really application specific. Then we concluded that there should be a programming language that can handle application specific exit games instead. So, so, um, and luckily Shuhei's focus, uh, our color researcher, chief scientist, um, Shuhei's um, specialty was designing programming language to define a set of problems that can handle. We decided our research focus on the generalization of plasma, applications on top of plasma. And then we decided, uh, um, we chose Plasma Cache construction, which prioritizes security over expressness of the application, and immediately immediately started working on the implementation, adding <coughs> some of our unique features to it. And thanks to Shuhei's huge effort, um, and the implementation went forward, proceeded pretty fast, and we titled the framework Plasma Chamber and introduced it at Edgon this May. And at the same time, we have been running POC projects with our clients. For example, we developed um, token, pseudo token trading system of uh, home generated electricity with chip electric power. And also we, we cooperate with an IoT platform company to research plasma use cases on their platform. But um, I just want to stress here that we are very, very grateful to have our clients because without them, we wouldn't have been able to run a sustainable R&D and create real world use cases of plasma. plasma. But however, sometimes it was tough to run POC projects and do the research at the same time because POC projects get back and forth as the base design of the, the framework gets updated. So here, um, after Edcon, we stopped, took time, and started thinking over the core values that we want to create in our framework once again. So here is the exact conclusion that we've got. Um, first, you can build applications very easily. So blockchain developers will be able to, application developers will be able to build their apps with L2 specific features such as instant payments and gasless transactions very easily without hassle. So they can cut the repetitive developments for those features uh, if, you, if they use a framework and every blockchain application developers will be able to build them in the same manner from blockchain beginners to uh, skilled software engineers. The 
second thing is you can build application securely. So the expression of all the fraud proof verification is now standardized with a universal notation. So before discussing all the different types of exit games uh, by a natural language and improving the security of the design was very challenging and time consuming. Time consuming. But now, um, with an application framework, it's going to be much easier to check and strengthen the security of the design from two aspects. Um, you, first one is you will simply write less, co less code, so there's going to be a few potential bugs. And the second thing is the claims designed for an application will be interpreted in smart contracts and clients with the same interface. So. So in the same manner, so there's going to be, um, you can reduce bugs. And the third thing is you can build application flexibly. So blockchain applic application developers will be able to build apps with the decomposable building blocks. Uh, and they can reuse the decompos decomposable building blocks for different types of L2 applications. For example, essentially, plasma and state channels can be built with exact com components. Um, but, and then this decompo decomposition and reconstruction plays a huge role in the abstraction of layer two. But the in impossible combination of all these little building blocks will be automatically detected by a compiler and You'll be, you'll be, you will be able to know that it doesn't work as an application beforehand. So to, the, to create these three values, um, we decided to um, discuss that there should definitely be a universal language for L layer two. So there's a saying that math did not evolve pretty fast until some early year, because there was no universal notation to describe all the basic math equations that we are now very familiar with. And if you're familiar with all the discussions and proposals made, made um, if research before, uh, you probably know that uh, every time making a post, you always had to write so many definitions at first. And at one point, we started wondering, maybe it's better to create some universal way to notate all different kinds of predicates for plasma. And we thought it would bring more efficiency and in the communication between researchers and be able to provide them with more logical way to prove the security. So if you want to know more detail of it, we described it in our plasma predicate research repo on our GitHub and when we first saw, thought of the plasma predicate DSL. Then Plasma Group um, proposed OVM. And as soon as it was proposed, we decided to go, go for it because that was exactly what we wanted. And what does it really mean to generalize all the fraud proof second layer solutions? Um, putting it to a simple word, I think fraud proof can be compared to a judicial system. All of them can be compared to a judicial system. There is a constitution, the strongest law, sitting on Ethereum, and in the case of blockchain, it is immutable. But the point here is, whether it's plasma, state channel, or optimistic roll-up, um, all the claims submitted from the second layer to the strong, strongest law, the constitution, will be following the same format and it's called claiming property. So how do you exactly um, state, claim that this information is correct to the, um, oh, going back to this slide, um, the constitution, the example that I used, um, the strongest law is called adjudication contract on Ethereum. And then how do you exactly claim that some information is correct to the adjudication <coughs> contract. Um, here you use uh, first order logic. 
First order logic is a proposition that contains sentences with quantified variables. For example, if you want to state that Taro is a man, then you can claim the sentence in this format. There exists X such that X is Taro and X is a man, where there exists um, works as a quantifier and X is works as a variable. And OBM employed this standardized notation to express all different kinds of properties to the adjudication contract. And so let's see some examples of the quantifiers. So if you want to state um, something has this feature, unique feature, all in common, then you have to use universal quantifier. For example, you ha if you want to claim that every cat is cute and you want to make this claim to be true, then you have to submit this claim to an adjudication contract and you can decide this claim true if there is no picture of ugly cat submitted to, to adjudication contract as a challenge. And then if you want the another example as a quantifier as existential quantifier. So if you want to claim that there is a fine cat with lens, then you just simply have to submit a single picture uh, as an evidence that has a um, cat with wings and flying. <coughs> so, using these basic um, property um, standardized notation, you can even make plasma, which is pretty complicated compared to other related to solutions. And before before deep diving into uh, all the properties that are needed for plasma. I will first explain how plasma cash works in general. So there are two users who want to make payments to each other. So they have to lock their funds onto a plasma chain, make transactions, and after done interacting with each other on the plasma chain, they have to make a claim to exit to the main chain. And after passing a dispute period without getting any challenge, they can finally withdraw their funds. And that's how plasma cash works in general. And to <coughs> enable this whole process, you need three different kinds of properties. Checkpoint property, exit property, and ownership property. So I will go over each property. Um, checkpoint property is to claim the validity of the coin history. So it says all the state updates within a certain coin range <coughs> before um, and in the every single block before the current block are all deprecated. So to notate this statement, you use universal quantifier two times and to specify the certain coin range. And exit property is to claim the coin has never been used with this not predicate in the notation. And then the third one, um, this is a key point of this presentation. Uh, it plays a huge role in the generalization of the L2 application design. So here it says ownership property is to, cl to claim that um, is to validate the ownership of the coin and it requires a signature of the coin owner. But if you want to make this application design as requiring a multi-signature, then you have to simply add another address to sign the transaction. So um, enabling switch, ena enabling to switch this third uh, property here uh, makes um, here makes it, it plays a huge role in the abstraction of the layer two application design. So to to enable this standardized notation, we stop and then. Um, think over the, over the framework design again and implemented plasma cache based on the OVM again after app gone. So it's now, it's of course secure, um, prioritizing the security, but now even more simple and flex, flexible with the OVM so that the application developers will be able to focus on designing application logic and front end of the development. So they can cut the dependency <coughs> without uh, repetitive implementation implementation for those L2-oriented features. 
and also the combinations of different constructions on the layer 2 are possible. So you can, for example, make channelosome plasma or dexon plasma. And here, this is going to be the highlight of this presentation. And we took a video of our demo up, kind of up to showcase what kind of application you can actually build with plasma chamber. Here, um, so I'm just gonna explain first what's going on here. Um, he's trying to make a payment from uh, right side on the wallet on the right side to the wallet to the left on the left side, and he's sending um, he's sending I think it was five die yeah five die to the wallet on the left side. So now he is pasting uh, the address of the wallet on the left side here. Okay. The bottom says send. So the transaction is completed here. Now he's checking the payment on the wallet on the left side as well. <coughs> here now the wallet on the left side has five die. This is the payment app that we've created with Plasma. And the next showcase app is Dex app. It's, uh, ex it's exchanging one ETH to 10 DAI. So he's choosing one ETH and 10 DAI to exchange between those wallets. It says new offer on the button, so the offer of the exchange is submitted. Then he, the wallet on the right side has to confirm the new offer of the exchange. So he clicks and confirms the exchange offer. Now it's completed, so if you check the history of the exchange, it says, oh, if you check the balance of each wallet, now the wallet on the right side has um, one, one E, and then the wallet on the left side has 10 DAI. So these were one application and the uh, showcase apps that we created with our framework. So, <laughs> so, um, this is the framework development that we have been doing to create these apps. So it basically has two components, OVM contracts on the sitting on the layer one and client implementation. So OVM contract has universal adjudication contract that I just explained, the strongest though, and then the predicate, the little building box to create all the standardized notation. And client side has um, basically two, three big components, OVM core, decider, and plasma aggregator, <coughs> and plasma clients. And now I'm going to talk about some of the challenges that we have been facing during our framework <coughs> development. So it was kind of difficult to balance between the runtime design and its implementation at the same time because all the applications built on top of the runtime is usually depending upon the runtime design. So we have to think about the runtime design, and <coughs> the abstraction of the application, what kind of application that it can be, it can be built at the same time. So, and the interesting part about runtime design was designing primitive building blocks for the properties. For example, it showed up uh, on the example of the plasma that I just explained, that, uh, that I explained before. Uh, the sign by sign by predicate um, primitive property uh, predicate is it's uh, it's a predicate to check if the data is uh, signed by this certain address. And another example of the prim primitive pr predicate is n predicate. It's it's a predicate to combine two different predicates. And the next challenge that I'm going to introduce is. Oh yeah, property serialization. So property <coughs> has to be interpreted both in smart contract 
and clients, so... Only one minute. Okay. So it has to, we have to design like a better, um, better efficient way to, for the smart contract to, in, um, to, to interpret all the properties. And because all the properties, some of the properties can have dynamic variables inside, we have to think about the data, data structure of the properties better. And the most difficult thing was multi-platform implementation for Android and multi-threaded programming using JNI for Android was very, very difficult. And so considering these challenges, we have to we decided our next major milestone to create wallet for developers and developer portal by the end of this year. So I was just gonna explain the little tasks that we are uh, having next term. So we are actually putting all this um, little task on Gitcoin funded issues. So please find it. And if you want to cooperate with us to create some of the showcase apps or real world use cases, please come to talk. <coughs> please come talk to us and let's cooperate together. So yeah. Thank you for yeah listening. <laughs> <laughs>